Hey, what's up guys? So here I have a bricked Ice River KSO Ultra that was bricked from uh, trying to uh, remove the overclocked software. Um, sometimes it can get uh, bricked even trying to install it. So you won't be able to use it both of these lights will stay on, the green and the red, and there's like nothing you could do at the moment. So, what I'm gonna do is remove the memory chip from here and reprogram a black memory chip and, and install the, the original firmware on the blank memory chip and, re, and install it back here. Okay, so that requires you you to open it and and do a soldering job. You have to desolder it and solder it back. So pretty much you have to do micro soldering, so it's like tiny stuff, you know what I mean? So you gotta have like a microscope in order to really do this. And a bunch of other things as well. So basically let me start off by first thing you wanna do is re remove the six screws on the bottom. You gotta remove those screws first. Okay. I'm just gonna loosen them really quick here. In order to, to uh, remove this bottom piece panel here okay because you want to remove the the motherboard because you're only going to be working with the board itself so let me get these screws out of here and let me put on my glasses so what happens is with the software is if you don't read the instructions correctly you can break it by trying to do the overclocking or trying to revert back can also cause it to to um, break so you won't be able to do anything with it okay I gotta get this last screw off Alright, so I'm going to try to pop this bottom piece open here. Because I, I purchased this, this one on eBay and it wasn't working because it had a, it had a, what do you call it? A broken component which I had soldered together, back again. But then I ended up breaking it because I was trying to because I was trying to um, remove the software. But you can't do it that way. All right. So the next thing is, when after you uh, pull it off, you got to be careful with there's two cables here that are connected to the two fans. So you have to you have to disconnect those cables. I already disconnected one. You see the cables there? Okay. You have to disconnect these cables right here. Okay, so then you can just set that part aside. Okay, so you're gonna have access to the board itself there. Okay, so I wanna remove this thermal paste, thermal pads here because I won't be needing those because I'm gonna have to heat it all up with my um, hot air station. All right, so now you're gonna have these screws here down here okay you also have the side panel screws i'm only going to remove one of the sides because i should be able to get it off so i'm going to remove this side here so i'm going to um remove three um four screws back here i only need to remove one and i sh and then I should be able to remove it you could remove all the other side as well but i'm just going to remove one so I'm going to put these screws on the side. Okay. 
try not to do any cuts on this video, but depends how long something is taking. Like the hot air thing. When I start trying to remove it, that might take me a while. Okay. So after you remove these four screws, you set this on the on the side. Okay. So now, now you have these screws here. There's eight screws over here. So with the regular I, uh, Ice River KSO and the KSO Pro, these should remove these. This um, you can remove these pretty easy. Just unscrew them off. But this one. The, the Ultra, they use the, what do you call that stuff? Um, I can't even remember the name off the top of my head. What is it? Uh, the, the locking paste on, on, the screw, on the screws. So you have to be very careful. So you have to, when, as you're loosening them, you have to loosen like one at a time from each side like that, you know. So, you know, so it's, they're kind of hard to, you know, so you kind of like loosen each one. Okay. Thread lock, that's what it is. They add a thread lock to the screws. So they might be a little hard to to turn them because these screws are spring loaded as well. So this was the one I'm gonna have a hard time with. So I already opened this before, and I wasn't able to loosen the screw here. So it looks like it's stripping, and that's gonna give me a problem. All right, and that's close to this here. All right. So I loosened all of them except this one. So I'm going to have a hard time loosening that because I have to remove this board. So I'm going to do that uh, off, uh, off video. I'm going to try to do it. Give me a sec. Okay. So I, I loosened it. I used the needle nose pliers and I, I had to do this very carefully. And like squeeze the sides of it and just gently turn it counterclockwise. And I was able to break it loose. So I'm going to start with re totally removing that screw there. Because it's a little bit stripped on the top. Okay. Put my glasses back on. Alright. So. So these are like spring loaded screws. So this one, I don't know if I'm gonna put this one back because it's a little stripped on the top there because I was trying to use a screwdriver. So that one, I might just leave that one out. I don't care because I don't wanna have a hard time with that. It's not good to put back. But I could put it back, but it just don't tighten it down all the way. So now I'm gonna remove the remaining seven of them. And I'm going to show you the chip that I'm talking about, the memory chip, that, that you would need to swap. Because that's what's holding the software. And if the software is corrupt or something like that, that needs to be reprogrammed. So, you, like I said, you could remove the other panel here on the other side, but I'm not going to do that because I'll just pop it open on, pop it open from the back here and slide it off like that. So I don't need to remove that both sides. So now put the heat sink back and here's the board, top side, and this is the bottom side. Now, right on the bottom of this here, let me point it out. This. You're going to see this chip right here. This is the chip that holds 
the information for the the software, the firmware. Okay, so this is the chip that I that you need to swap right over here. See that? With a reprogrammed one, or you could reprogram this one if you know how to do it. You know, you can reprogram this one, erase it, and then reprogram it again and just put it back. But I'm just going to most likely put a new one in because I have new ones. You see this one over here. But in this video, I am going to just do the removal of it, okay? And then in the next video, I believe, or whatever, I'm going to do the uh, uh, replacing it with the with the other one. So in order to do this, see, that's like uh, this has like I believe 48 pins. So you have to heat this up with a hot air station over here. You have to put. You have to use uh, some of this. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Okay, some flux, okay, I'm just going to move this out of the way because I'm going to be messing around with a lot of heat. So I'm going to put this under the microscope here, okay that looks good there, looks pretty good, let me see, should I get closer? Further away is better, I think. All right, you gotta use some tweezers. So as you're heating this up, you have to make sure that the solder is completely melted. Don't just yank it out like a savage beast, you know, like slowly try to move it. And then if it's not ready to move, you know, ready to come off, you have to keep on applying heat, more flux, on it. So let me see if I can record this here on this um, camera. This lets me uh I think I can't even tell this thing is recording or what. Let's have trouble with this, with this camera. It doesn't like it doesn't show you whether you're recording or you're taking pictures. Like, that's stupid. Like I don't use this on a normal base. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if it's recording. But now I'm going to add flux to this to the pins on one of the sides and then the other side as well and then I'm going to turn this back way on here I'm going to I'm going to go with uh, 425 Celsius so let's turn this on here One, and I have to try to remove this chip here while I'm heating this bad boy up. Alright, so it's going to take me a little while, so I have to heat it up. So I, I'll be back. Give me a sec. I bumped it up to 435 Celsius, and I was able to remove the chip. Chip is right here. I don't want to drop the chip. So this is the chip right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to clean up the area as well with these like q-tips and and then I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the chip with the reader right and uh, let 
and clean up this area real quick here. Just remove the, removing the flux here. So I'm going to um, put it on the programmer, read the chip, save. I'm still going to save the everything here, like uh, the software that's already installed in here, just in case anything happened. I can bring that back. Okay. Just going to clean the chip as well. Use another one. And basically, that's what that's what you got to do. And then after you get uh, program the other one, or if you purchase one, because I'm going to be selling them um, from me then you just replace it back so you don't have to do the programming you know after you remove the, the one that you, you have already on your board here I'm reading the the data out of the the memory chip for the Ice River KSO Ultra because I'm going to reflash. I can reflash this one again or install a new one that I have right over here. Reflash one of the blank ones. So that's what it's doing right now. Save the uh, original messed up uh, bricked software. I backed it up and now I'm just um, um, Checking out the chip, reading the chip to make sure it's it's erased because I went ahead and erased it, the original chip, so I can reflash that chip. So that's it for this video, and I will be making a second video, and I'll talk to you guys later on the next one. Peace, and I'm out. Later.